Hello. Welcome to Yelling at Birds. Uh, Matt here, obviously. I appreciate you being here with me today. Um, this, on this episode, I was fortunate enough to interview Danae Stevenson. She was nice enough to give me some of her time to talk about her life, uh, time, time in the Air Force, or current time in the Air Force, actually. Um, her decision to take something, take her artwork, something that was uh, started out as just kind of a a way to deal with some feelings and some emotions and some um, to assist with you know some mental health issues that um, that she was going through and um, turned it into decided to turn it into a business and we also talk about um, she recently got her master's in um, counseling so her decision or inspiration to kind of pursue that field and um, kind of what she looks forward to in the future or what she looks looks towards in the future like that so um, obviously that's enough of me rambling oh in the video also uh, she shares and I'll display some and below and below in the, the description I will show some um, links so you can go to view purchase uh, her artwork learn more about it learn more about the in inspiration and uh, learn more about Danae herself so Without further embarrassing myself, here's the interview with, with Danae Stevenson. Thank you very much and enjoy. Well, thank you very much for being on here. This is awesome. Yeah. Thanks for having me. I'm excited. Uh, me too. So I guess um, no, like no warm up. We'll do a little warm up here. Um, pretty much like just going to go through kind of tell me about like your background a little bit, um, where you came from, things like that. Um, <laughs> what you're doing now, and I'd love to talk about the artwork you have in the background there. That looks awesome. So I'm like totally set up in my bathroom. Awesome. Well, the lighting's like, great. I'm sitting like on the edge. I don't know if you can tell. This is like the edge of my bathtub because okay. this is like the room with the best lighting, and so I'm like, oh my gosh, I feel so funny, but yeah, hopefully it's not too noticeable. So is like, that your faucet's out of the way? Is that your studio too? <laughs> I wish, it really, like this room, it has the best light. And so I wish I could, but no. I, I paint in my living room. My studio is my living room. Okay, nice. Yeah. And when did you start doing that like a little more seriously? Um, so back in, I would say September is when I started. I, I don't know if I was serious then. I was yeah. making it, uh, I was painting a lot more because I had just graduated uh, school and kind of didn't have a lot going on. Um, and so I kind of used it as a way to work through some of the feelings I was having and all that stuff. Uh, okay. so then, yeah. So yeah, I think I started painting more in September and then about a month after that is when I decided to kind of form a business and start doing it more so like seriously like sure. in that aspect i guess so okay yeah like um is the jump like now you're put you're putting your name out there and you're um i guess what's the change for you when you when you say like now i'm taking it seriously well i mean it's still a hobby of mine so i still enjoy doing it no matter what okay. and i kind of uh I do have a like a little battle of like, oh, am I trying to create for what people want or do I want to create for myself? And in the end, it's creating for myself. Um, and if people like it, then great. And if not, then that's okay too. Um, sure. But yeah, like, so I think the more serious is serious part of it is just being able to sell it and yeah, getting my name out there and hoping that my pieces speak to people in some way or another. Um, one of the coolest things is like, my local friends here, you know, they'll come over and I'll be like, Oh, like, look at this piece I did. And they'll be like, Oh, wow, I see this and I see that. And then someone else is like, what, where do you, why do you see that? <laughs> like, this is what I see. And I'm like, you're both wrong, you know? So right. I don't know, it's just kind of cool. Cause it's, it's fun seeing different people's perspectives and then being able to say like, Oh, well, this is what I was like feeling when I made this. Sure. Sure. Do you feel like, but that you don't have to name anybody, but do you feel like you have a friend that like gets it? more than the other ones do as far as like what you're going for or are they all wrong all the time <laughs> <laughs> I don't know like it's kind of it it uh I, 
think there was one piece I did and it was called um, Overwhelming Thoughts. And I don't have it here. I actually, my, my friend bought it. Um, and I'm wondering, I'm trying to think if I even have, I know it's on my social media, but essentially like I just had, it was just like layers and layers and layers of different things. And one side was just like very like, you could tell there was like brighter colors underneath it, but I had done like all these like dark, dark colors over top and kind of very scratchy and like, you know, whatever. And then it kind of flowed into the other side and it was more bright and vivid and like, you know, just kind of more vibrant. And I remember was like, wow, this is like really crazy. It's like this, like this darkness over here. And then it just kind of like turns into light and, you know, and I was like, yeah, that's like, I mean, that to me is like when you get those overwhelming thoughts, like it's, you have such good positive energy, but then just like those thoughts, if they're just negative, they just start piling onto each other and creating like a type of darkness. Um, and so it was kind of cool to get someone's perspective and kind of nail it with that piece. Mm -hmm. um, but with other ones, it's kind of just like, it's hit or miss, but that's okay. Cause I, then I get to explain it and sure. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Um, well, we didn't do, I skipped right ahead. Um, so Danae Stephenson, thank you very much for Stevenson. Yeah. <laughs> thank you very much for being here. Why don't you, uh, I guess, tell everyone a little bit about yourself, kind of where you came from and, uh, where you're at now. Okay. Uh, so I'm originally from Arkansas. Um, I, in the sixth grade, I ended up moving to Wisconsin and that's kind of where I call like home, I guess, cause that's where I graduated high school. Um, a lot of my lifelong friends are from there. So, um, I was there until I well, graduated in 05 and then in 2006, I ended up joining the air force. So I just hit my 14 year mark in the air force. Um, February 1st. Congratulations. So huh? Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. It doesn't seem like it's been that long, but at the same time, I'm exhausted. <laughs> um, but yeah, so during that time, I've lived in a few different places. I lived in Florida for a while and then um, lived in North Carolina for about four years. And now I'm living in New Mexico. I've been here a little over a year and a half. Um, yeah, and then since then, I've gotten... I went to school, got my bachelor's. I just graduated last year with my master's in counseling. So I kind of do have like a little background in mental health and consider myself an advocate. Perfect. And yeah, so that's where I am now. Okay. And what kind of role did you, I guess, in the, what was, what's your role in the Air Force? So by trade, I'm a mechanic. I work on support equipment and it's the equipment that they use to test aircraft systems. Um, generators and air conditioners and things like that uh, right now and we all there's always the opportunity to do different jobs and things and so right now I'm working at our wing in a protocol office so we're kind of the POCs and coordinators for ceremonies and events that happen all over base okay and so you just graduated with your master's in counseling yes. that's amazing uh, congratulations to you on that one too uh, mm -hmm what uh what drove you in that direction um so i've always kind of been interested in like the way people kind of work and inside the brain you know um and i think also dealing with my own personal struggles that has really helped guide me into the direction that i kind of wanted to take um even before i kind of even knew what i wanted to do and then i actually focused on school counseling um, growing up, our high school counselors were, well, mine specifically, uh, wasn't that great. And so when I was trying to figure out like what I wanted to do, I kind of kept that in the back of my head, like, oh, you know, I don't want any kid to feel like the way that me and my friends felt because of this one person. So, sure. um, kind of lead, leaned in that direction of helping, you know, the teenage, uh, teenage kids and kind of helping them not only with you know, their future and their career and stuff, but also with the struggles that we all go through at that age and hopefully to kind of be, be there for them and help them get through those things. Awesome. So you mentioned, um, so somebody maybe not doing, not being the greatest person for you in their role is a motivation to do a better job yourself. Um, I know, well, 
you're probably not the, you know, you and your friends probably aren't the only girls that have, um, have come across that, you know, maybe a, a high school counselor or, you know, a counselor at a, at a smaller, at a smaller school or any school really not being equipped to maybe handle, you know, what you're going through. Mm -hmm. Um, can you kind of, I guess, put yourself back in that, in that place? Um, what were some kind of, (laughs) as painful (laughs) as it might be, um, I guess, what were some areas where you felt like you and your friends could have used more help? I think just the like stigma of mental health and the things that we go through, like, um, you know, dealing with divorce, dealing with death, dealing with, you know, not knowing where you fit in and that kind of stuff and just not really understanding how to one, not understanding what those feelings and emotions are, and then two, not knowing how to deal with them. And at that time, it's such a critical age that we're in, and everything's, you know, so embarrassing, and what will this person think, and, you know, I can't talk about that. And and also, depending on, like, what, how you're raised, you know, that your environment as a whole is really dependent on how we react to that stuff. So I think just even having a more in-depth class, teaching those different skills and techniques and um, teaching like, hey, it's okay to not be okay. And here's the Mm -hmm. way that you can get help and here's the resources and things like that. And, you know, thinking back, I I try to remember like, hey, were we given those opportunities or were we given that information? And we may have been, and I may have just been in that mindset of like, oh, I don't need that or I don't need this. But looking back now, I'm like, oh no. I needed that. And even talking with some of my friends, like, you know, we're in our thirties now and we kind of talk about that kind of stuff. And it's like, no, like we, we needed that. Not just us. Like we collectively needed that. So that's another thing that kind of motivated me to go into that field. Yeah. (laughs) I like looking back, I think like our, I think ours was fine, but Mm -hmm. I think I don't remember there being really, anything beyond the, hey, if you need something, go to talk to the counselor, Mm -hmm. or if you're acting up, or, you know, beyond talking to the principal or the teachers, you know, go to, they'll make you go to talk. So it was almost more of like a punishment than anything. Yeah. Um, So would you say like having a counselor or having someone in that position that's more um, proactive in being involved in the the curriculum? Yeah, absolutely. Um, the, actually the local school, high school that I interned at here, they have a set of guidance counselors that focus more on the career aspect and the class aspect. And then they actually have a couple mental health counselors specifically assigned to the school to be that role. Um, so I, I interned with the, uh, with the, um, excuse me, with the guidance counselors And we did a little bit, you know, we would kind of help each other out. So if we had students come to us about something, we would, you know, depending on what it is, we'd have to do an assessment. And then if we thought it was severe enough, then we would, you know, walk them down to their their office or have them come up here or come up to the guidance office. So, um, so yeah, like I think having someone there specifically for those kinds of things would be very helpful. Yeah, absolutely. And where are you, where are your sites like right now? So you, um, do you have, how was the experience for you interning at the local school? It was really fun. Um, it kind of solidified what I wanted to do. I, you know, a lot of the friends I was in school with, they all were working with elementary or middle school age kids. And I was like, eh, I think I'd be better with high schoolers. And as, <laughs> as much as, uh, yeah, as much as fun that they said that they had it in the, on their levels, I really did like it. And I, I do like the ability to work with them and talk about their future and stuff too. And that kind of helps correlate to being a leader in the Air Force as well. Like when we have our newer airmen and stuff come in, like I'm always like trying to talk to them about their career path. Do you want to go to school? Like, what are you trying to get out of this and be that person? Kind of like almost a little bit of a liaison, I guess you could say mm-hmm. to know the resources, know where they can be found and like point them in the right direction. Yeah. And so where, where are you looking to go, I guess, from here? Well, I'm going to stay in until retirement because I have at least six years left and that's, if I, if I made it this far, I'm going to keep going. Right. Um, You're so close. So, <laughs> yeah. I, I might try to look for 
diff there was a, a excuse me, there was a job that um, I was going to be able to apply for to kind of be a mental health officer in the Air Force, but they revamped their uh, healthcare professional system, so it's no longer available. But I think that's okay. Um, I, you know, I'm kind of like one of those people that everything happens for a reason. So there's just something else that I was meant to be doing instead. Mm -hmm. um, so I just kind of take the skills and things and my knowledge from the education I got and just try to, you know, push them into what I'm doing now and just being a leader. And so I'm definitely going to stay in. Um, as far as what happens after I retire, my plan and goal is to, you know, become fully licensed and become a counselor. But I mean, who knows what could happen? So right. we're just going to see. Okay. Um, do you know, I guess for maybe other people that are going, that are going through school right now, mm -hmm. um, do you know is that is that something that you have to like recertify anything until you get licensed or is that something where you you have the degree and then when you're ready you can go utilize it so once you get once you get the degree you uh take a an exam it's a national exam and when you pass that you have to submit an application to um oh my gosh of course i'm gonna brain fart on this <laughs> <laughs> the uh, counseling association, whatever. Oh my gosh. So yeah, so you submit it and then they have to either, um, approve or deny your application. And if they approve it, then you are considered a, uh, licensed practicing counselor associate, which means you still have to go by whatever your state recommendations are to essentially intern. You're, you're able to counselor or be a therapist but you have to do it under a supervisor still okay. and usually it's roughly another two thousand to three thousand hours so essentially like finding a full-time job for a while <laughs> um yeah so you have to do that and then once you get all those hours and then you can apply to get your actual like license your independent license and then i believe there is like a recertification process that you have to do or do like continuing education and things like that okay so, yes. so <laughs> Sounds like the task list get, list is still pretty big after after that. Yep. Sure, sure. Um, so now while you're while you're serving, you are um, producing that artwork. Um, I guess you mentioned you mentioned some feeling some feelings. Um, mm -hmm. is, and that was a way. Is that a way for you to kind of express some feelings or cope with some feelings? Exactly. So. I so I personally have dealt with uh, depression and, and anxiety for uh, I, I know at least like high school it could probably go before that before I kind of like was aware um, and you know coping with it back then I'm not gonna get into you know those kinds of things but yeah. Um, yeah like I I definitely have over the last few years have really used art as a way to express myself, get my feelings and thoughts out, um, be able to kind of see them on canvas or paper or whatever. And it, it just kind of really helps process that stuff. And then I'm able to kind of sit back and think about it. Um, and so over the last few years, I, you know, I've been creative in some way or another, like I feel like my whole life. Um, probably over the last five years is when I started doing it a little bit more when I was in North Carolina. Um, you know, I was involved with the art community there, the local community. I even, uh, we had a group like a painting club that was on our base that I ran with help from others. And, but a lot of the things I did were like things that I like would donate for the fundraisers or, you know, whatever. Okay. And uh, so then kind of fast forward to a couple months ago, like I said, I finished my degree and like, I was busy, 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 go, go, go. And everything just stopped. And it kind of just hit me. And yeah. I fell into just this like really dark place. Like, you know, I was able to like get up and go to work every day and function, but that was like the gist of it. Like I didn't want to do anything else. Like I was just not in a really good headspace. Sure. So I kind of started painting just to kind of get it out. And my mind is always like just go 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 but when i'm painting it all goes away like all i'm thinking about is what i'm putting onto canvas and so it is it's a huge break from my like all the nonsense going on up here 
Um, and it is, I guess, somewhat like of an intuitive painting. That is a process. Um, so like, I kind of just, I don't ever go into any of my artwork with a plan. Well, when I do, it fails miserably, but sure. I, I usually just kind of sit and think about, you know, what's going on. And I just kind of see these colors or I feel colors or however you want to say it. And I just kind of go with it and whatever happens, happens. And sometimes it's a piece I don't really care for. And then other times it's something that I'm just like, oh, wow, like, this is really cool. And then I get to sit and look at it and kind of just reflect on what I put down and then also mm -hmm. like what's going on in here. So you can, um, can you, can you look at a piece that you've done like a while ago and kind of know what was going through your head at that time? Oh yeah. 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 I could like, absolutely. And if you look at, um, if you kind of go through my albums and look at the photos and the descriptions, uh, <laughs> the titles of my pieces, especially for the specific uh, series that I did, my first series, it was called Thanks, It's the Depression. Because <laughs> um, I was making these pieces and my friends are like, wow, like, how are you coming up with this stuff? This is so cool. And I'm like, yeah. oh, thanks, it's the depression, you know? Yeah. And so um, I was like, okay, you know, I'm going to start titling these pieces over what I'm feeling. And so, I mean, I have things titled Unworthy, disappointment, imposter, the overwhelming thoughts. As I said earlier, I did a, a larger piece that was just titled anxiety. So like, oh, even if I tried to forget the titles right there, but I did that as a way to kind of harp on the idea or the thought that even though something looks so like pretty or beautiful or put together on the outside, there's just so much more going on on the inside. And that's what my pieces are representing. Wow. Yeah. So, um, can you, speaking of, of, um, like depression and anxiety, I think it's interesting to hear cause we can, we all see the commercials and, the uh, if you have, you know, they list, list off some symptoms. Um, mm -hmm. can you, I guess, uh, what am I trying to ask? I guess, can you, can you kind of talk about how that kind of feelings of depression or and feelings of anxiety kind of manifest in your day-to-day -day? let's say so are you talking about like the like maybe some of the symptoms I feel yeah or or like, I guess when you when you started when you started realizing that that was maybe what was going on um what were some things what are some things that you noticed in yourself Okay. So because I have been dealing with it for so long, like I just kind of know at this point and like, what's funny, not, not really funny, but I guess, <laughs> I don't know. I try to make fun of things. I think things right. are comical. We all got to laugh, you know, but, um, back in September when I was like getting done with school and everything. And like I said, everything stopped. Like I just knew I was like, mm -hmm. I'm not going to be okay. And even though I knew that it was really hard for me to take all those like preventative measures. Um, like in that time, what I did do was, um, I, I found a private re private therapeutic retreat. Um, that was local. It was in Santa Fe, which is just a few hours from me. And so I booked, uh, that it was a week long. So I spent a week uh, with a therapist that I saw every single day for a few hours and then you know I had homework and then I there was some other like self-healing services that I tried while I was up there as well um so that was one thing that I was able to do um to help prevent it the only problem was is that I booked it in September and it was for December so I had these months in between that I was just kind of like okay and I'm, I'm you know I'm trying to deal and I'm trying to cope um the things that come up for me though are just uh I don't even know like I just I feel very um like you know maybe like I have just like this weight on my chest um I I kind of realize like I stop wanting I'm a very social person I like going out and doing things I enjoy meeting people I enjoy getting involved and so this pretty much all fall like I did nothing but come home or I went to work I would come home I would like take naps, I would get up and eat. And I, if I like, 
I have like insomnia probably from my nap taking. I get it. <laughs> but like, so then I would like not be able to sleep. And so I was just like always exhausted. Um, I find, I, I notice I find things to keep me busy, but not necessarily like, oh, I'm going to go out to stay busy and whatever. Like, you know, so I put all my effort into work. So I was like working through lunches and working after work and staying after work when I didn't really have to. I mean, that's kind of my work ethic in one way. Like I, I do want it, want to make sure I get all my things done. Um, but I was like overexerting myself in that aspect as a way to like not come home because when I was coming home, I was like not feeling great. And it's such a weird place to be when you like know you're not in a good mindset and you know you, like you have the tools you have the like knowledge and you know how you can get yourself out of it like mm -hmm. calling someone exercising you know whatever it is but still not having that like motivation to do it and feeling like you're stuck in a way and so those are some of the things that I see is like you know things that I like busy myself with so I don't have to think about what's going on up here um if I really just stop wanting to go out in public, like I said, like I didn't ever really go do anything or I wasn't doing anything. And if I did, I was like, I got out of the house today. Yay. <laughs> so yeah. And then just like the other feelings of just like, I think a lot of it ends up coming back to like what you're telling yourself on the inside. So then I would start having that like negative self talk about, you know, Oh, what are you doing? You're not doing anything. Like you're being lazy, and then that just like piles up, and oh yeah, just, it doesn't <laughs> it doesn't really end well for me anyway. Right, kind of it's like two problems that feed themselves. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Right. Yeah, and I think that's like that's got to be the most common thing: the um, keeping yourself busy to not think about other things. Mm -hmm. And I think that's like a lot of people I talk to. So when I the meetings I go to are more towards um, like alcohol, alcoholism and addiction, but they're also towards um, kind of changing people's thought process. And like that strikes that chord when um, people just feel like they just need to kind of keep themselves occupied with anything, anything to it. It's, it's all just escaping and, and avoiding. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I think that that's so common in, and and I, and I think like most people don't even like think about it. They just, they just, he's a hard worker or she's a hard worker. And like, that's as far as the thinking goes. Yeah. Um, like exactly. a dedic dedicated, dedicated servant. And that was uh, cause you know, I did confide in a few of my coworkers uh, cause I do try to, you know, I'm not like, I will make jokes like, Oh, like, Oh, it's my depression. Like I was saying, but mm -hmm. um, I am open about, things to an extent but I did end up confiding in like a couple of my coworkers, like hey like I'm not okay right now and I'm really trying to be better so sure. forgive me you know and they're just like wait what really like you and I'm just like <laughs> you know <laughs> so absolutely can resonate with that yeah did you feel um did you feel anything change with them when you started actually like really opening up to them no I mean you know it's Maybe I don't know if that's a good answer or not, but <laughs> no. like, you know, they were just like, all right, cool. Yeah, cool. Good job on being sad. No, um, they didn't judge me. You know, I think that's the biggest thing is everyone's like, oh, what are people going to think? Like, right. no, I think honestly, the people that I decided to open up to, it gave them an opportunity actually to share their experiences. So yeah, yeah. Like, so each of them are like, oh, wow. Yeah. Like I went through that or, you know, this is how I felt at one time. And so it kind of like gave me the op opportunity to connect with them mm -hmm. on that level about that thing. And then, you know, knowing that I was understood and then also them knowing that they were understood. So in a way it was just kind of like, you know, you're there for each other in that moment. And right. yeah. And so like the whole fear of, oh, I'm going to be judged. Or what are they going to think of me? And I, I, I'm to a point where, you know, I, I don't, I, it matters what I think of me and not other people, if that makes sense. So totally, like, I'm going to share it. And if they're like, oh, well, she crazy. I'll be like, okay, <laughs> moving on. Maybe I am. Yeah. <laughs> maybe I am. And maybe I am. There you go. <laughs> That's, it's good to hear. Um, I like hearing things like, um, obviously anybody can have any reaction they can be like, oh, like, like stay away from the sad girl or, or whatever. But 
it's really awesome to hear that at least, and maybe not everybody, but at least there's some, there was somebody around that felt, you know, they had permission to open up to. And then it, you know, kind of, you know, I'm sure, I'm sure it felt, it kind of changed something in you to, to know that as well. And I'm sure that helped a little bit at least as much as it could. Yeah, for sure. I think uh, I've always been kind of, I like to talk things out, mm -hmm. even if it's just like a, a small disagreement with someone, like I'd rather be like, hey, that kind of made me mad over being mad about it for three days and then just being like, oh, whatever, you know. Right. Um, so to me, yes, talking does help. And yeah, I think, and it, like I said, it does kind of strengthen that kind of like relationship, whether it's a personal relationship or professional relationship. It just shows that like, hey, yeah, like you may think I'm this like superhuman because I'm like working my butt off and doing all these things, but I'm still just as vulnerable as anyone else. Right, right. It turns out humans are human. Wait, what? Occasionally, <laughs> occasionally humans are human. Interesting. All human. Um, so then you um, tell me about once you, once you get done, you have a, now I'm talking about painting. Um, okay. Once you get, <laughs> once you get, uh, you have a have a piece you get through it and you're finished whether you're like okay that was good or okay you know you're feeling it or not you know what are what are some feelings that you have afterwards after you've kind of completed a piece um usually I do feel better I feel like I've kind of gotten something like you know gotten something off my chest um depending on how intense I guess the feelings were like, I have some pieces that I just like, you know, was <laughs> painting with my tears basically, because <laughs> I'm just like so sad or whatever it was I was feeling at the time. Um, so yeah, it's, it kind of just depends on what I'm doing and how I'm feeling. Now I will say something that has happened that I didn't think would is selling some of those pieces. Like I, I there's some I make that sure. I'm just like, Oh, that's cool. Um, but the ones that I do, like, I think the ones that I have really painted from the inside, when I sell them, I'm like, I'm such a nerd. I'll be like packing them up. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm going to miss you. Like, you know, and then it's like, I get kind of sad. Like, I didn't think I was attached to these pieces, but sure. just as much as like, I'm putting a part of myself onto canvas. It's like, now I'm giving it away to somebody like that is like you know, that was my bad day or that was my good day that, you know, I'm sharing with someone. So, and I think that just kind of goes back to like, you know, maybe someone sees something completely different. I just want my pieces to like speak to someone in, in whatever way that they see it. Yeah. Like that's like the funniest, but not funny, but like, yeah, that's, those are pieces of you. You know, those yeah. are representations of something that you've gone through or you're thinking or feeling. And then now it's now someone else has it hanging on their wall. Um, <laughs> that is a weird feeling, but it's also kind of cool. Yeah. In a way, I think. Do you have? Um, is there a specific piece that like you will will not sell? Um. Okay. So actually, one right now I have been. Yeah. Buying. Absolutely. Let me. Let me get, step into my office. Get, get in the tub. <laughs> hey, you're not supposed to tell people I'm oh. <laughs> No. So this is a piece and actually this was uh I think I made this Oh my gosh. I want to say it was like kind of after I had decided to form my business and stuff like that and I was I was very happy when I did this one. Wow. And I just really enjoyed kind of like all the different pieces of it. Um, there's a bunch of different like textures. I don't know if you can really tell. Yeah, yeah. Like a bunch of different textures um mostly you know acrylic but a lot of just different shapes and colors and things like that and i i think i think this kind of to me represents like things are looking up you know what i mean mm -hmm. so like right now i'm not selling this one because i just love looking at it so much yeah. <laughs> that's beautiful thank you so yeah there's a couple that i kind of um have i'm keeping for myself right now like actually i brought my other one in here like so this is another one that I have recently done. Um, this one's titled Connectedness. And I remember making this one when I was just like feeling really like, 
just, it was a day where I just felt like totally with myself, totally, you know what I mean? Like everything was just kind of like lining up and I really just didn't feel like mind, body, soul was all in line, I guess you could say. So okay. some of those pieces that like that are, I am holding on to for a little while. Sure. One of those days that everything was just like, fuck yeah. Yeah. Okay, I got it. <laughs> I got it now. And then the next day, it's like, <laughs> like what? You know, public I thought we were good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I was gonna ask. So, well, one thing I thought was interesting, you were talking about uh, overwhelming thoughts, mm -hmm. and when I pictured it before, you kind of ex went through the explanation. When I pictured it, I pictured it the other way. Like, so you, so I pictured it the op like the opposite of how you explained it, because um, you right. explained it. Um, as you know, you're having like good positive thoughts and then all of a sudden it goes to the darkness and it goes to everything else. For some reason, I picture it the other way. Like you're clouded with a bunch of thoughts and then you process mm -hmm. it and you get, and then you resolve that and then it gets to the other okay. side. I thought that was, in I thought that was interesting. See, yeah. Like even just describing it, you have your own little perspective on it. Mm -hmm. And Absolutely. I mean, cause I mean, overwhelming thoughts to me might mean one thing, but to you, they mean something completely different right right and i mean it's the same with anything that we talk about you know like the you know how people feel anxiety or anxious or feel that depression or whatever like it all affects us differently yeah you know, it's always that that see that's the stuff that always interests me like how two people can live through the same thing but the way that they see it or perceive it or process it is can be complete opposites absolutely and I think that that's why it's so interesting to get someone's perspective on that, even though like it's very, you know, depression and anxiety are very common, but um, we're each individual human being is the only person that in the history of the universe will ever live that life that yeah. they're living. So that of course they're going to experience it a little bit differently. Um, but I do, I appreciate you kind of walking through what you feel because I know that there's, you know, someone out there too that, is maybe not realizing it or, um, and that can connect with something that you're saying and also in a way feel less alone or feel less like something's wrong with, like something's like actually wrong with them or um, other than like, this is a, they're dealing with like a normal human experience and something that touches a lot of people. Right. Um, so you mentioned, mentioned your business a couple of times, but we never, um, I don't think we officially named it. So if someone, if I would like to look at some art where of yours, where do I go? <laughs> um, so I have, I'm on Facebook. I'm on Instagram. Uh, on Facebook, I'm Danae Stevenson Art. On Instagram, my handle is Danae S3 Art. Um, and then I do have an Etsy shop. I have slowly started putting some items in there. It's also Danae Stevenson Art uh, is my Etsy shop name. And then I'm also on Google as the same Danae Stevenson Art LLC, actually. On okay. So um, I think I actually did, I updated my Google website because they have like a little website that it'll take you to. Um, but my link for my Etsy shop's in there. My link for my Etsy's on my Facebook. And uh, on Instagram, I have a link tree that kind of goes to everything. And I am, one of my goals for this year is to have my own actual website. There's a lot that goes into that. And oh, yeah. I'm tired. So <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, it is, it's on my list of things to do. So yeah. Um, yeah. So those are the different ways you can find me. I don't know if you're able to do links and stuff on these things, but actually, the links. I should, I should be able to now. So I just, I had, I got a computer with, a, with some better, better editing capabilities. So cool. I have this interview and two other interviews that I'm waiting to like, I'll be waiting until I get that fully set up so I can really do a good job. Then I can throw some links on there and, and everything. Cool. Otherwise, if I fail at that, then the links will be in the description. You're um, not going to fail at that. You know, um, I'm like so bad at technology too. Like I asked her, yeah. someone was talking about a Bluetooth speaker today. I'm like, oh, and then you just plug your aux cord into it. And they're like, it's Bluetooth. I'm like, all right, whatever you figure it out. Like, <laughs> I don't know. So you're like, I mean, you're like a decade behind. No big deal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm good. I'm working on my like iPhone SE, you know. Sure. Oh, no. 
<laughs> um, so do you have do you have uh, shows and, and events in the in the area that you live that you are participating in? Um, so right now I'm trying to work with a local business to kind of do like a mini art show, um, and I'm going to invite some of my other business friends that I have kind of made like through Instagram and just being like you know in the community. Um, so we're trying to set a date for that. I think it's I'm going to try to do it sometime in March, and. Um, but yeah, and then like uh, on this past Friday, uh, local, there's like a little like plaza and there's a bunch of businesses in it and they had a little pop-up and one of the business owners asked me to set up a table and nice. so that was really fun. I got to meet a lot of cool people and a lot of the business owners that I had only kind of seen through like social media mm -hmm. and they were talking about making that a monthly event. So I'll probably start doing that. Um, I was invited to be a vendor at a festival here, a local festival here in October. So that's kind of on the schedule. And another really cool opportunity that came across was a uh, newer company business called Fluidify. I posted about it a few times on my social media, um, but the owner is kind of like, uh, he's an artist and he kind of has like invited all these artists to kind of group together. There's an, they have an Etsy shop and it's kind of like this little art family. Um, and so that was really awesome. Like they reached out to me and invited me to be a member of their team. So that was like really exciting and kind of like a big deal. Uh, so I also have some pieces listed on their Etsy site as well. So yeah, as of right now, that's all I really have. And we'll hopefully see other opportunities pop up. Absolutely. I think, I think you keep doing those. I think they will for sure. Um, any, I think we're about wrapping up here. Any last uh, things that you want to let everybody know about? Um, well, first, I just want to thank you for having me on. It's been awesome. Um, I feel like so cool. I'm on a podcast. <laughs> no, uh, <laughs> but no, it's been really great. And um, I think I probably, it's, I, if I didn't make it clear when we were talking about, you know, the mental health stuff is, uh, it's definitely, it's okay to not be okay. If you feel any type of way, even if it's just like over some small thing that happened, like there's so many different resources for people to reach out. There's no reason why someone should feel alone. Everyone goes through these things. And um, I just hope that like, you know, that people are, I just hope that the stigma of mental health being such a bad thing or whatever um, slowly goes away. And so I'm just like really grateful for you talking about this stuff and then letting me talk about it here as well. Absolutely. Well, I really appreciate you being here. Um, everyone else, uh, Danae Stevenson here, uh, Danae Stevenson Art <laughs> on Facebook, Google, Instagram, Danae3 Art on Instagram. Yeah. Um, thank we'll you. link it. We'll link it. <laughs> we'll link it on here. And I'll probably do another like closing video after this to talk about a bunch of other stuff I forgot. But thank you very much. I appreciate your time. Um, good work. And Good luck on uh, on your future retirement. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you so Very much. Good. Absolutely. Well, you have a great night. You too. All right. Bye now. Bye. Then, and meeting. Boom. We'll see ya.